Hey everyone, it's Alex here, and on today's episode of The Yabonk Show, I have a very special guest, Drew from, uh, Drew Wolfer from Presend. Uh, Drew, do you want to say hi to the audience and explain a little bit uh, about who you are? Absolutely, man. Salute to everybody that shows up. I appreciate it. We appreciate it as content creators, so, you know, obviously make sure that you're showing love to the channel in one way, shape, or form. Um, I'm a YouTuber. I'm also a fellow... Well, I'm not necessarily, I wouldn't say fellow, but I have created cryptocurrency businesses um, basically out of thin air. Before, you might know me from Wolf of Finance. You might know me from ripping through your favorite DeFi Ponzi scheme. <laughs> you probably know me from something in this market. And um, yeah, at the end of the day, I'm just out here uh, trying to essentially bring value to the market and be the face of the pivot and the change that I feel that I wanted to see in the market so that we can actually have crypto become something that is mainstream and see wide, widespread global adoption for crypto. Now, uh, fun fact for people who don't know, six to seven months ago when I first got out here and I was jumping around in these rebasing projects that were all the rage back then, you had made a video making fun of one of my favorite projects and like calling it all these names. And I like was on your YouTube channel like, you don't know what you're talking about, man. And we got in like a, a YouTube argument and that was like my first interaction with you ever. And then like that project faded away and didn't do well. And then like next thing you know, I'm like, hey, I, I, my YouTube channel started picking up speed at that point. And I was like, yeah. hey, uh, do you remember me? Do you remember when we talked? And you're like, I think I do. And I'm like, hey, I started a YouTube channel. Do you have any tips for me? And you were just like, yeah, here. And you gave me all this great advice on how to like, build out my studio, what equipment to use, what software programs to use to edit things, record things, make my thumbnails. Like he gave me a ton of great advice early on. So I just want to say thanks for that, Drew. You've always, you know, we've been friends since then. And it's just funny how we started off like combative and then we turned into friends uh, as we become peers in the YouTube scene. And your channel's awesome. Hey. If you guys mm -hmm. haven't, Go like and subscribe uh, to to Drew Wolfer on uh, YouTube. His channel is excellent. His videos are entertaining. Uh, and I hope at some point to get to that level of YouTubing. But um, baby steps, you know what I'm saying? So uh, Yeah. And, hey, it's probably, to be honest with you, man, um, are you really friends if you haven't fought them, right? Is kind of like my, my opinion, right? I fought all my <laughs> friends. I fight with my friends more than I fight with regular people, right? Same thing with my brother. You know, me and my brother and myself have been in more fights than I've probably been in with in arguments than I've been in with every other single person combined. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's true. We had, we you know we had a great debate and everything. And then at the end of it, we became friends. So it, it's yeah. super cool how that happens. Now, the reason we're here today is because of pre-send. And for those who don't know what pre-send is, uh, Drew, do you just want to give like an elevator pitch, a 6,000 foot view of pre-send. Yeah, yeah. So pre-send is very simple in its complexity, right? It's essentially all about protecting wallets and transactions on blockchains because there's this interoperability kind of lull in the market. It's like a bunch of Apples competing with a bunch of Microsofts, right? Where nobody wants to be interoperable with each other. Now, this creates this massive exposure in the market, especially for people that aren't as what I would consider season in the market yeah. and they send cross chains and they potentially lose their money. So think about like sending Polygon Matic, right? From a Polygon wallet to an ETH wallet and then losing all of your money or sending USDC out of Coinbase and sending it on the Matic blockchain, the Polygon blockchain, but they only support ETH, right? And then you lose all of your money. So essentially what Presend does is it stops that from happening. It also has honeypot detection. It also has um, the ability to let you know uh, if your wallet address, your recipient wallet address, it's called spoofing, is going to switch a fraction of a second before you send your transaction on, you know, decentralized exchanges. Hmm. It's going to be, it's going to be operable with every single wallet, every single operating system, every single type of media, whether it be a phone or a tablet or a laptop, and then all different browsers known to mankind. And 
spoiler alert, it's patented, so no steals these. This one's ours. And um, yeah, we're going to integrate it with literally everything that you can think of. Exchanges, hot wallets, cold wallets, whatever. And um, we're targeting MetaMask first. So this is all about, we're essentially, we're a software company. At the end of the day, we are not a crypto. We don't have a chain. We don't have a coin. We don't have any of those frills and shills. We're not going to tell you, hey, we're building the, you know, um, moon boy, black hole, blah, blah, blah. You know, we're building this software. And moon boy. It's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, Point out the moon, baby. That's um, right. So but what we do is we, we play chess, right? So we basically build things that actually make sense. We build things that actually do something to help people we deliver i don't even like calling it utility because that is such an overused term in this marketplace yeah. we have a use case we have a reason for existing xyz um auto compounder what's their reason for existing they don't have one it's we a game a that's to me that's all it is they're, they're games right 100%. like you're playing against yeah. other people most of the time and it's a game to see who can play the game the best and so exactly. this isn't a game this is an actual software no. tool right yeah Yep, exactly. It's a software. It is not a cryptocurrency. It is not a cryptocurrency company. It is a Casper Wyoming incorporated in the United States company, right? And you can go and check it out. And, you know, at the end of the day, there is no none of this SEC, CFTC regulation. We're literally a software company that is essentially in the crypto space, but not the other way around. We're not a cryptocurrency that is in the software space, right? So take us and strip us down to our underwear, right? At the end of the day, all we are is a software and a software company. Now, because it operates in the cryptocurrency ecosystem, a lot of people would say, hey, this is a DeFi, this is a cryptocurrency. But if you actually strip it down to what it is, it's none of those things, but it still has the ability to do all of those things, right? And um, it's very unique, it's very unique. And it's like, I've described it as Google in 1998, um, and we'll get into that later. So you mentioned a few things in there that I, I find very interesting. It's not often in this space I hear the term patented. So this is an actual patented yeah. software technology yeah. that means that I can't just go as, uh, as a software engineer myself or as a, a million different script kitties, as we call them, uh, out here just I can't just fork this thing, right? I can't just fork presend and launch my own presend project. This yeah. is a patented software. And if I tried to even copy some of the um some of the functionalities, even if I didn't just copy the code, even if I tried to copy some of uh like how it how it works and tried to do that my own, like I could be I could get sued for infringing on your patented copyrighted technology. Is that am I correct there? 100% correct. So yes, so it was very, man, it surprised me. It surprised me that nobody has the patent on this. And if you know anything about patents, especially in the United States, it's not about who invented it first. It's about who patented it first. Yeah, we patented it first. And if you I mean, you know, this probably better than most people, but we'll explain it to the, the lay person that might not be as privy to this information. But at the end of the day, if you patent code, okay, it's very easy to get around that because someone such as yourself can literally change one line, call it a day, get around your patent. If you patent set process, very hard to get around, okay? Exactly. Especially when you're patenting a broad process. Now think about protecting cryptocurrency transactions. There's really only about one process to be able to do that. Make sure you're sending on the right, right chain, make sure you're sending to a compatible wallet, make sure that you are sending a coin that is compatible with said wallet on said chain. That's it. So if we have the patents on that, nobody can really get around that because there's no other way to protect, right? So yeah, it's gonna be really hard for people to come at us. It's like, you're gonna have to come like Oliver Twist, right? And that bowl of gruel and say, please, sir, may I have some pre -send? And yes, you can, but it's going to be for a licensing fee and an exorbitant right. amount of money. Right, yeah, so you'll mm -hmm. do a, Kevin, uh, Kevin O'Leary Shark Tank royalty deal and be like, yeah, if you want to yeah. use this technology in your software or your wallets, uh, in your right. wallet product, you know, Trust yeah. Wallet or or what have you, they would have to license the technology from you, even just to build their own version of it. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty, pretty yeah. clever. 
Yeah. And then if like, say like at the end of the day, um, what we're targeting from the jump is immediately we want to go after MetaMask, right? We want MetaMask to piss, pick this up and essentially put it into their wallet and say, mm. look, this is a non-negotiable functionality that's built into a wallet now. I don't think that that's an issue. I think that that's almost like, dude, it's it's almost an inevitability, right? Especially with the way that we're building it because MetaMask is, we're building it on MetaMask Snaps and MetaMask Flask. So MetaMask actually came out with these two initiatives in order for people to come in. They said, devs, please come in, make MetaMask better. If you can make it better, we will integrate you into our wallets and um, we will roll out and update. And, you know, this is a very easy thing for MetaMask, which is the only way that they make money, if you think about it, is from those transaction fees when people are swapping inside of the wallet. You want to swap USB-C for ETH, right? They take 87.5 one hundredths of a percent of that entire transaction. Well, with this, you don't have to be swapping. You're just transacting and people are transacting. MetaMask has 30 million wallet active users. So you've got 30 million people transacting every single day. Like this is a lot of money, even if you're taking home pennies, which we are. That's all we want. We're not trying to get rich off of this. We're not trying to charge people exorbitant amounts of money, especially the users, right? We want to charge MetaMask money to license this. We want to charge Coinbase, Binance US, Crypto.com. That those are the entities we want to be charging a decent amount of money to use this, right? Because they have a use case for it. For the end user, we want it to be the one tenth of a percentage aggregated fee of the entire transaction, and then just two cents guarantee, just in case some joker wants to come in and say, "I'm going to send five bucks," and we don't make any money off of that, right? And mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, we are running a business. So to yeah, put that, that into sense. perspective, one tenth of a percentage, you send a hundred dollar transaction. That's 10 cents plus two cents. You send a hundred dollar transaction across 12 cents to ensure that said transaction goes through without a hitch. You have car insurance, you have health insurance, you have home insurance. Why aren't you making sure that your transactions are going through like without a hitch? Why aren't you making your process more efficient, right? For the people that are like, I've never sent a transaction and never lost money. I'm infallible. All right, cool. I bet you sent test transactions, right? You've sent and, test transactions. If somebody says sure. something like that, they are yeah. asking for the universe to screw them over, like immediately. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's gonna get it's gonna get bad. So yeah. at the end of the day, this not only saves people money, saves people time though. Because think about how long it takes to send a test transaction. Because that's like the majority, like all the Reddit a couple, bros, a couple Crypto minutes, bros, right? Like, like would, at least yeah. maybe five to fifteen minutes, right? And yeah. say you send a thousand dollar transaction. Let's say you send a thousand dollar transaction, right? <laughs> that costs you a dollar and two cents. Right. Is five minutes to you not worth a dollar and two cents? Is fifteen minutes, dude? If I'm sending a thousand dollars, I'm staring at that screen for thirty minutes, uh, like bro, with a raised yeah, heart rate. <laughs> and, and that's worth more than a dollar to you. Those thirty yeah. minutes to get back, you can go take care of your animals. I can go play soccer with my kid. For 30 yeah. minutes i can you know just go and have a, a nice conversation with my wife dude time is seriously precious and i think a lot of these like i said like all these crypto bros oh never do that i'll just send a test transaction well <laughs> do you not have anything to do um do you not value your time in a monetary way right is your time not worth more than the the fee that it would take you to not have to worry about that ever again and just the worry the stress from it even at that, right? So yeah, man, this thing is such a necessary addition to this crypto market that I couldn't believe that it hadn't been already implemented, but let's be real. It's There's crazy. a reason why it hasn't been implemented. You know what I'm saying? And it's because it's much easier to go out, hit a tomb fork, dump on everybody, pump and dump it, rug pull it, whatever, make your half a million dollars be out, right? And, and not have to do anything to make said money. This is hard. You have to develop this. Your software developer. This is hard. This is this, like this. Yeah, this is different. This is not. You can't just fork maybe. this and like Google uh, how to deploy it up. and have it deployed in thirty minutes. Copy yeah. somebody's like front end website and just change a few values. Like this is yeah. this is a. And you can't just print process. money out of thin air and make people phantom returns that you can't explain where it comes from. Oh, I can explain where it comes from. You printed it out of thin air. But for us, it's not like that. We don't have a chain. We don't have a coin. We don't have any of that stuff. So it's like, that's a hard sell 
right? Real business, real revenue, real, <laughs> like that's a hard sell, um, yeah. realistic, right? Yeah. In this market of moon boys, right? And man, I mean, the market has pivoted. I hate to break it to people, but the market pivoted a long time ago. Wolfer kicked it off. Um, and so, Dude, it's just going to keep going this way. Like the, the death of the Ponzi's, man, like it, it, it's, it's a thing of the past. So at the end of the day, get on the train or get left behind because we're going. So if you want to be with us, I would suggest doing <laughs> so. If you don't, don't be crying saying, oh, Drew, I wish you would give me, you know, a chance to, to get in. No, we're not a Ponzi. We closed it. We sold it out. It's done. I'm sorry. Nothing I can do. My hands are tied, right? I'm <laughs> cut. It's nothing I can do. And I... I actually, I like both sides of the spectrum out here and, and everything in between. Yeah. So like you got your super degen, like what I call them short term, maybe medium term plays, as long as you know mm -hmm. what they are and like what, like, as like, cause what, what gets yeah. me mad is when people hold to zero, which I have done out here. I've learned my lessons. I've gotten burnt, but like, if you know how to trade some of this stuff, sure. You can make money playing around in them. So like, there's like the short term investments or gambles as yeah. i call them and then there's also like the long-term value plays and this mm -hmm. is more of a, a an investment in a a legit technology company uh long term like you guys have an outlook of many years not just like yeah. three months like some of these projects have yeah. that's like a typical runway for a lot of them like some of the two yeah. forks and the rebasing pro protocols and yeah. but i i like those projects too so anybody who, i just want to yeah. get make it clear like I've made money off those. I've had fun in them, but at the same time, like that's not something I'm going to like set it and forget it in my yeah. portfolio. That's like, I have to actively manage that on the day to day. Like, and I'm, I sweat at night knowing I've got a, like I'm yeah. holding some of those tokens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I don't yeah. want to wake up and there's zero the next day and that happens. No doubt. Um, so this is a, this is a cool thing to bring to my audience. I I'm glad to offer a mix. Like, yeah, I got the D gens and I'm one of them. And, and then also I've got like people who are looking for real investments and, and companies and businesses out here. And you, you, you said something very important. You said, you can't believe that nobody uh, had done this yet. And I think that just goes to show how early in this space we really are. It's like the beginning of that dot com boom where like, such like something that seems like such a eureka like oh that makes so much sense it's so simple why didn't anybody think of this before and then you realize it hasn't been implemented yet and it's those like opportunities those arbitrage uh, uh like invention arbitrage opportunities where it hasn't been invented yet it's going to be no matter what um yeah. and you're gonna get that first mover advantage so super cool to be in this space only mover possible. advantage yeah only mover advantage there is no competition we're the only game in town um, at the end of the day, try, you can try, but we're going to hit you with that season sit bam, right? Quick, uh, sue you into oblivion, of course, right? And then, you know, that's that, you know? So this, this is Google N98. The only difference is we have no competition. There is no, um, like, stopping our trajectory other than the fact that people are just like, I don't want this. Right. And no one's going to say that. I mean, some people will. Yeah, of course, there's the Reddit bros and the guys that are infallible. Right. We get it. Y'all are perfect. OK, cool. But ninety nine point nine percent of people are going to say, I get it. It makes I'll sense. It. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't cost you anything up front, does it? It's like you no. said, two yeah, cents per transaction. Down, like, prone, yeah, it's a prone point. extension. Like, it's like, 1%. does MetaMask cost, cost anything? No, you just go and download the MetaMask. And then if you decide to swap on MetaMask, that's when they charge you your fee. Now, if you download the Chrome extensions, smack it right on top of your MetaMask or whatever wallet you're smacking it on top of after we've developed all the other wallets and integrations, then, you know, yeah, of course, you're going to get charged the fee, um, just like you would get charged the fee on a blockchain if you were transacting on said blockchain, right? Only difference is, is we're protecting your money while you're moving it instead of just giving you the ability to move it into oblivion right because polygon doesn't care at the end of the day if you move your money into the, that proverbial cryptocurrency market black hole they're still taking their fee on the polygon chain for the miners and the master node holders right so oh yeah we care <laughs> we care we're protecting you we're stopping that from happening because if you do do that it stops dead in its tracks and we flag it and say boom and we tell you, why did we stop this? Either wrong wrong chain, incompatible wallet, 
or that coin does not exist on that chain in that wallet, right? So check these things out and then go fix your transaction, right? And to be clear, if we stop one of those, say you send a hundred bucks, right? It costs you 12 cents. We just saved you. If, if you send it wrong, we just saved that hundred dollars for you, right? We don't take it. That's not our money. That's your money. You earned that. You worked hard for that, right? We still get our 12 cents, but here's the difference. That 12 cents that you just paid actually is going to pay for the next $833 transactions on Precent. So by us stopping that, we actually just paid for ourselves on the next 833 transactions by not letting you lose $100, right? Um, and there's many other ways the Precent can pay for itself and uh, also earn people money in the interim. But you know, we'll get into those here in a minute too. It, it, it reminds me, I have this community member, uh, Agriel, I think his uh, screen name is, and he... Mm -hmm messaged me a few weeks ago like two or three weeks ago distraught man and he's like dude i i was sending uh four bnb to a different uh mm. chain or wallet to get into this pre-sale uh that's about to launch and he's like i sent it to the wrong address i i had like one letter off or something i or he's like i copy and pasted it wrong and it didn't get the last few letters it's he's like w is there anything i can do i'm freaking out and like he's from um like a different country and everything like that and like i know twelve hundred dollars yeah. to anybody's a lot of money but like dude, i'm pretty sure it's like yeah. a lot a lot of money where uh where he might be from and dude i was like i felt so bad he was distraught like it's like twelve yeah. to fifteen hundred bucks gone like that like that's weeks worth of work that he's gonna have to like do to save up that amount of money again to be able to like play around in DeFi. so like if he had pre-send on that like you may have you you would have saved that guy a lot of heartache like he was saying like i'm about to quit DeFi, dude like i can't yeah. and, and and one of the things you also mentioned there like this is DeFi, and by definition DeFi in its purest sense is impersonal DeFi doesn't give yeah. a shit who you are excuse my language but yeah. like that's what DeFi is it, it takes like the people aspect kind of out of it at its purest form but so if you want a true DeFi solution to that DeFi problem you need yep. an actual DeFi solution like you guys have created. Like, we don't have yep. customer service out here. You know what I mean? We can't yeah. call customer service. There's no customer service. Nobody's sending <laughs> that money back. <laughs> hey, uh, the Satoshi? <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, CZ, uh, can you reverse that transaction on that, uh, on yeah. that Binance node? No? Uh, yeah. Dude, you know what it takes for them to, to do that? Just spoiler alert for everybody that wonders. Bro, this is nuts, dude. This is why they don't do it. Or they're hiding it and it's all a big conspiracy and they're just keeping the money. That's what I think. <laughs> um, but that's the YouTube dude, video that, for a later time. I'm are, right? Oh my God, Eureka moment. I'm starting a chain. Are you kidding me? It's brilliant. Right. Yeah, <laughs> straight up. So th what they have to do to, to recover that is you have to get access to their private keys, right? And then they have to go back and reset and redo that entire wallet. Right. So when you're talking about an exchange, bro, they're not doing that. OK, you see what I'm saying? Because then they have to do that and reset that every single time they can recover all the ones up to that point. But what stops them? So here's another thing. Right. What stops it from happening again than them having to do it again? That's why they don't recover anything. They're like, dude, I know you guys are going to make the same mistake again tomorrow. You guys are degenerates. Like, <laughs> you don't get it. And so yeah. now pre sin stops that from happening. Dude. There might be an ability for us to go out and get that money back for everybody now when we integrate into all the exchanges and say, yo, you guys got to reset all those wallets now because that'll never happen again and then give these people their money back, right? You know what I'm hmm. saying? That would be cool, right? I'm not saying we can do that. I'm not saying we're going to do that. Do not try and come back at me in a year and be like, you didn't cover everybody's money. I didn't say I would. I said it would be cool if we could. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I already so, know how people are. People love to come at me and be like, dude, do that. You always, know? always. If I say I, something like five months ago. Favorite DeFi long time ago. They still hate me for it. Bro, I know what you mean. I said, if I say something five months ago, and like, even if market conditions change and like the price yeah. goes down on something, I'm getting, yeah. I'm getting hate mail no, and death your threats. Fault. It's your and fault, bro. You yeah, did it's like, it. It's, I lost a know, thousand bucks because you, I saw you made a YouTube video about this, so I put money in it. I'm like, oh, what, what? Oh. I told you, do, not financial advice. Look into it yourself. Don't just like yeah. take a YouTuber's 
they, yeah. some of most of them don't even watch my videos. They'll say, I saw you made oh, a video on this. And no, I'm just like, all right, dude. did you listen to it? Yeah. And they're like, no. But uh <laughs> dude, I swear to God, I had somebody the other uh it was like a, a month or so ago or something like that. They were trying to tell me that I was pumping Thor. And I was like, Stop. Do you dude. know who I am? <laughs> and they were like, You you were pumping Thor. And I was like, Bro, I'm oh the gosh. guy. Like, I'm that guy. You probably need to check and see who I am, man. Because like, did you watch any of my videos? And they were like, Yeah, you have hella videos on Thor. I said, I do have hella videos on Thor, but they're you, not nice. You didn't watch it, uh, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Like you're sitting yeah, there and there with like a clown wig on and your clown makeup dude, on, like doing bro, the thing. I had the axes and and the oh, yeah, I, coat, and I was like going to war. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. I was, I was going to war. I was going up against like forty five thousand people in their Discord, coming to my sections, hitting me up, blah blah blah. You know what I mean? But I don't, you know, I don't fold under pressure. That's fine. We can do whatever. So, but yeah, I love, people, I love your props, man. You. That was great. I remember the the axe, like the battle dude, axe, axes, and the thing, bro. and the yeah, uh, the fur coat, dude. Yeah, it was epic, man. It was yeah, dude. So, um, times. we. We talked a lot uh, there about a bunch of different aspects of this. And I just kind of wanted to give, before we jump even further into the weeds, a quick overview of your the main features, the main functions yeah, of yeah. Presend. So out of the gate, what is the minim minimally viable product here? It's going to be, yeah. let me let me see if I got this right. It's going to check to make sure you're first sending it to the right chain from the right chain. It's going to check that the wallet address you're sending to is a real wallet address that exists and then it's going to check that that wallet is a real wallet address that exists on the chain that you're trying to send it on yeah so that's, and the, that's main... the main key okay. so then there's the there's the secondary aspect of that right because just because that chain and that wallet address exists doesn't mean that that coin exists in that wallet right because like think about it like this right hmm. um like even ledger doesn't have DAG in it for some reason. I don't know why. Right. You know right. what I mean? And it's like, that doesn't mean that that coin is in there, right? So just because, like, it could be some random coin that's like a smaller cap, and it's just not in that wallet, even though it's on that chain. So it has to check that as well. Then it sends a test transaction, okay, which is the minimum amount allowable on said blockchain. So for, like, Bitcoin, it's just a Satoshi, right? It's like six zeros and a one point. 0 0.6 and a one. It's like a few cents. Boom, sends it out. If that shows up, all those checks pass. Boom. Now here's the caveat. This is where people also have to hold themselves accountable, right? Say that you copy an address wrong, but it's compatible with that chain, coin, all of that, right? And you accidentally send it to the wrong address, but it's it's an actual address. Right. We can't stop that because if it this is an algorithm. If it passes all those checks and you send it to a scammer wallet or somebody else's wallet randomly, like, dude, there's nothing we can do about that. Like that lady from crypto.com, right? The the yeah. lady that sent the lady $10 million. We can't stop that. All right, that's on you. Yeah. But what we can do is tell you when you're about to lose some cash um, and we can stop that transaction. Now, I do want to be 100% clear about this. This thing is read only. So all you Reddit bros and all you crypto bros that are like, I'm not giving you access to my wallet. I don't want access to your wallet. We don't need access to your wallet. We're just getting read-only access so that we can stop a transaction in case you make a fat-fingered human error mistake, which, let's be real, we're all humans, Louis. We can agree on that. And so that's all we need is read-only access. We're not getting your private keys. We are not doing any of that stuff. You're giving more permission to those DEXs for your favorite Ponzi schemes and all yeah. those D apps, you're giving them a thousand times more. Access do you want to, do you, to approve, you than you're ever going to give us? Do you do you approve uh, this this DAP to transfer yeah. unlimited amounts yeah. of your BUSD? Yes, <laughs> like yeah, no, like, totally. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh God! Whenever I <laughs> when I'm when I'm trying to get into a DAP and it asks me some something like that, I'm just like. Uh, like I'll do it, do the transaction real quick, and then like <laughs> disconnect. Yeah, seriously, I'm gonna be. Did I just I'm sign up to become a human sentai pad? Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> South Park. Yeah, exactly, oh, man. man. Yeah. So, all right, now let's jump into the weeds here. Now that we got that out okay. of the way, we know what your minimal viable product is. We know who you are, and we know basically the the value add of presend and that it's yeah. legit, patented, all that. So I'm actually gonna pull up my screen here. 
And while, while uh, we're talking about this, this is the pre-send website. So if you guys haven't checked it out yet, check it out. Uh, I think it is, uh, is it presend.io? Yeah, presend.io. And uh, first, I, I want to ask, I've heard you guys have a partnership with Chainlink. They are huge. Yeah. Do you guys really have a partnership with them? Bro, that's facts. I mean, I don't put in, you know me, dude, I'm the most prepared person in the room. So the way that that happened with Chainlink was Chainlink reached directly out to me. All right. And if this gives you any type of understanding at the type of um, reputation, integrity, you know, business that I've built in this market, then I don't, if that doesn't even tell you, I don't know what does. But Chainlink reached out directly to me. So you know, whoever's watching this, your favorite DeFi, your favorite Ponzi, your favorite project that says we're partnered with blah, blah, blah. But yeah. really they're not because all they did was just offer them money to use one of their solutions. That's not a partnership. I hate to break it to you. They're not partnered with nobody. Did they get announced as a partner? Probably not. Or is it just an affiliate link, right? So there's a big difference. Now, Chainlink is actually coming in. They came to Drew Wolfer and said, we want to partner with Wolfer Finance. We like you. All right, cool. What do you want to do? We want to automate your snapshotting and airdropping process. I said, absolutely. It sounds wonderful. But I'm going to need you to partner with PreSend as well. Is that cool? They said, absolutely. They went and looked at PreSend. Obviously, they looked at it first. Then they came back. They said, absolutely. That's perfectly fine. They are doing the exact same thing for PreSend, and they are developing, they're developing it themselves. They're, we're not developing that. It's their solution, right? And they're automating the snapshotting and airdropping process. What better of a solution, right? Chain link, really? You know what I mean? And and then once this is done and once we need them to do this, they will be blasted. We don't want them to do that yet. We don't want them to do that until that Chrome extension is done, until the airdrop and the snapshots are ready to rock. All right? So, yeah. That's crazy that, like, because a lot of people, they'll use, like, chain links i don't know um like just a part of ch uh, chain links like oracles or something they'll yeah. they'll use a chain link oracle in their smart contract and then they will claim that they have a chain link partnership and i'm just yeah. like no, you can't do that or they'll say we have a coin no. uh coin market cap partnership because their coin is on because we're on coin market cap exactly nah. so i yeah. see that so all the us, time and i yeah. Chainlink is legitimately doing it. Like they reached out to us and asked us if they could develop it on their what what I don't know what it was Oracle maybe, um, but whatever the solution is that they're doing, I don't know. I'm not that guy. They're way smarter than me and stuff like that, so they do that. But yeah, Wolfer Finance is partnered with Chainlink. So is Presend. I wanted to be clear. Presend has two partnerships. One is Chainlink, the other one is Wolfer Finance. Without Wolfer Finance, Chainlink partnership is not there. Without Drew Wolfer, the Wolfer Finance Chainlink partnership is also not there. So just because we have an AMA with somebody, just because we have a Twitter space with somebody, just because somebody does a video on Precent, they are not partners. There's two partners, you can see them on the website. Got it, got it. So people aren't gonna be like, Oh, pre-send in your box partnership. Oh, right, right. Or just, you know, your favorite Ponzi DeFi because we went in and um, did a Discord AMA with them to tell their community about the solution. We're not even trying to sell you anything. I'm not peddling any wares to you. I'm just telling you this is a thing. If you want to use it, great. If you don't, whatever. Awesome. Well, that's super cool that you are actually yeah. talking to somebody from Chainlink and not doing what we we're just saying. So you've got a real partnership with them through yeah. Wolfer Finance, and you've made a deal with them that uh, that they will take on Presend as well in the same capacity with the automated snapshot and airdropping yeah. uh, technology that they're developing. And Chainlink's super yeah. advanced, by the way, for people Dude, who don't know. know. Uh, their technology is super awesome. They're they're leading the way in a lot of stuff out here, and people might be like, "Oh, but the their coin or this and that." Like, don't I don't even care about that. Like the stuff that they bro, they do. I was asking this. dude about that. He said, "I don't even look at the coin price. We don't I, care about the coin price." Yeah, oh, like that's that. Yeah, it's not like, yeah, sure, people can trade their coin. We're not talking about trading here. We're talking about them yeah. as a technology company. They're developing super, super cool stuff like the oracles, yeah. like the keeper nodes, all the stuff that like you might, you you probably as a DeFi user interact with their technology every day without realizing it. Yeah. So just mm -hmm. like they have like it's automated nuts, solutions. Man. I'm and, jacked, bro. Like yeah. to have those types of partnerships and be bringing those in. And like I said, they hit us up right? 
that's the difference, man. And we didn't like, I never even thought of it because I was just like, why would I think of that? I don't know, you know, but it like for Wolf or Finance, right? And he just hit me up randomly one day and he was like, hey, man, we need to jump on the call. Like, I was like, cool, let's do it. Dude, that's awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. So for people who don't know what Wolf or Finance is, uh, you yeah. can go to, uh, what's it? It's wolfer.finance and yeah. it's uh, NFTs that give you uh, exposure and profit sharing for a whole bunch of different uh, validator and master nodes yeah. on different chains and things like that. Did I get that yeah. right? Yeah, let's, and, and, and let's beat it into the ground. Let's be 100% clear. We're talking real nodes here. We're not talking Thor. We're not talking yeah. strong block. Yeah. We're not talking vapor fine. We're talking FTM validators. We're talking ETH validators, AVAX validators, Kronos validators, Flux top tier nodes. We're talking the DAGs of the world, man. We're not talking about anything that's not probably in like the top 50, right? Or the top 100 guaranteed, right? It's like, these are the best projects known to mankind. And, you know, that's that. And we have it. And you can check out the, um, whatever, the treasury and, you know, like, you can stake on our nodes if you want. Like, because why? Because Drew's the realest person on YouTube. Literally. If I'm telling you that it's cool, it's there. So click on that FTM validator node right there. It'll take you. You'll see what I'm talking about. It'll take you straight to the FTM validator. Boom. Wolf of Finance. That's awesome. That logo, baby. Like, dude, we don't play around. <laughs> you know, so at the end of the day, like, if you want to be in, in good company, right? This is where we are. Um, and, you know, I just... I just appreciate the fact that I get to do this, right? Like, I'm very, very appreciative of the fact that this is a thing, man, you know? And, dude, I'm blessed, you know what I mean? And I'm trying to share that with, you know, everyone else, right? And, I mean, well, for finance, dude, I gave away 95% of the net income. I don't need, I make 5%, bro. I give 95% away to the investors, to the people that funded the institution. So, like, at the end of the day, man... This is about a pivot. This is about a market, like almost like overturn, like flip the whole thing on its head. That's what I'm trying to do here. Like in a real way. I'm not trying to just be like, oh, oh let's flip the market on its head. Nah, I'm doing that. We're doing that. We're not talking about it in YouTube videos. We're not just saying we're doing these things. Like I'm saying that we're doing it. Yeah, because it's already done. We've done it. So it's, there's no talk. Here. It's just, these are the things that we are trying to do and we're, we've accomplished them. And, you know, if people want to join on the ride, uh, just watch the empire that's about to be built. And, you know, here in a year, whoever's watching this in the future, hide from the past because it's going to be way crazier. Now that you're watching it, you're probably going to come back and be like, Oh, I remember when Drew was just standing in front of his thing talking about, you know, building the empire, but now it's here, right? Oh, he has, you know, all this other stuff now um, that, that, that Wolf of Finance has brought out and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I hope so. So, you know, hold me accountable. Awesome. And this is, this is great. I, I like these models yeah. of projects because I can't afford 32 ETH or whatever to buy an Ethereum yeah. node, right? Like I, yeah. I, I I run a nonprofit organization, right? I'm not yeah. like balling out like some of the people out here. So like if yeah. I wanted to have exposure to that because I think it's a more conservative uh, investment path in DeFi, I, yeah. this gives me that kind of exposure to it. So I think it's a cool Bro, idea. look at that Kronos validator. Look how much that bad boy costs. <laughs> no, no. And, oh, and that's not that's... even complete yet. It's not even complete yet because I need to have more than 4 million Kronos. We're still waiting to get the rest of our orders filled. We got the money for it if we want to, but we're not aping into stuff because we're smarter than that, right? And so that's not even filled yet. That thing's probably going to cost close to $500,000. Who's got five hundred thousand dollars to put into one note, no. or you can buy that NFT that costs five hundred dollars, and you have access to all of that right there, dude. That's crazy, man. That's yeah. crazy. It's man. a cool model. This is what I'm talking about. Like people are literally trying to duplicate this right now. But yeah. I'm gonna be real. I I truly hope that people, if they do duplicate it, I hope that it works out for them. I hope it goes well. But all I can say is, just because you watch Bruce Lee movies doesn't mean you can do Jeet Kune Do, my friend. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like Project 79 too. I, I did an AMA with Sam over there, the Hydro Whales yeah. guys. They're they're super smart serial entrepreneurs just like you. And I think I it's like, innovative. 
at the very least. Yeah, you know? and I I think it's cool, and it gives you exposure to something that doesn't rely on like like a Ponzanomic type game or model or whatever. It's like a real business <laughs> investment, right? Um, I don't know. And yeah. I will get into this in a little bit. Uh, remind me if I yeah. forget to ask you later, but uh, Wolfer Finance has a uh, large investment into Presend itself, and there is going to be some crossover there where the Wolfer folks, the Wolf Pack, will benefit yeah. from the Presend's success, and yeah. you guys are basically helping Presend bootstrap itself and, and break into this market. Did I get that right? Yeah. Um, not really. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I think something just fell. Um, hold on one second. Uh, my, my W just fell. So, yeah, it's, <laughs> you're 100% right in the sense that we are helping Presend. We are not bootstrapping Presend, though. Okay. Uh, at the end of the day, Presend is going to raise its own money. Okay, that's, that's, that's first and foremost. Now, do we have a 10% equity stake in Presend? Absolutely. Did we um, put like $50,000 into Presend so that we could essentially um, fund whatever else that we needed to have funded so that they can't try to classify us SEC style from like using the funds from the NFTs to, you know, develop the software initially? Absolutely. Yeah. Because we had to stay away from that. And then that's also what helps with the marketing budget. Right. Um, at least in the, in, on the very first like interim, but at the end of the day, Presend is going to fund itself through the NFT race, but you could almost consider it bootstrapping because at the end of the day, I've been here before, so I have the roadmap for this. I know how to do this. I have a thousand plus investors at Wolfer Finance that can attest to the fact that I know how to do these things. I know how to launch a project. Um, and that's essentially what I'm doing for Presend, right? So um, just so that it's 100% clear, Wolfer Finance owns 10% of Presend, right? And Drew yeah. Wolfer owns 10% of Presend, right? Who's going to go out and work harder for you? Who's going to go out and preach that Presend gospel? for you more than the Wolfer Finance holders that own 10% of your company or the founder of Wolfer Finance that owns 10% of the company and has the marketing ability, the has already been there, the proven product, the trial and error is no longer a thing, right? And so, um, yeah, man, yeah. Yeah, and the reason I asked that is because like Presend, I have, uh, I have no doubt that they would be able to raise as much money as they want, basically, yeah. uh, with yeah. or without you. But because I know they had a lot of options uh, of I don't know who about they without me, bro. But no, no, listen, 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 listen. <laughs> but I know they had a lot of options, including mm -hmm. options for even more uh, money yeah. and everything. But they chose you because of your ability to yeah. be like a firecracker, like a launching pad yeah. for anything in this space. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's like, it's a strategic at the partnership. Day, they wanted somebody that's going to come out and um, that's going to actually build the business. They don't just want, like, Larry didn't just want money, right? He wanted somebody, and that's Larry right there. Look at him, uh, straight up angel, right? And uh, <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day, Larry wanted somebody that was going to help him build this thing, right? And that's me. So you can go out and secure 100K from somebody. Right. And give them 5% equity in the company. You can go out and secure 100K, give them 10% equity. Are they going to be CEO status person? Are they going to be somebody that's actually going to go out, build this business, be grinding? Or are they going to sit back and say, look, I put the money in. I'm not working enough. Right. right. Whereas with me, you already know I'm going to go out and build this thing and, and try to make it into what it needs to be. And my long term vision for that is obviously the. MetaMasks of the world, the Coinbases of the world, and doing all those things. Um, so yeah, and yeah, my, uh, my lights turned off, man. My blue light. <laughs> it's off. okay. You can't. It looks great still, man. Your your setup's still way cooler than mine. I'm I'm getting there. Um, but Larry, uh, I think he. I'm no I'm no like business guru. I'm no genius, yeah. and I'm you know. So these are all my opinions, right? Um, but yeah. I've seen every episode of Shark Tank. Okay quite a few times and uh there's a difference uh, from what i understand with venture capital raising in dumb yes. money uh yeah. and uh smart strategic money so he he was he wasn't looking for dumb money because you can get people to throw cash if you got a good idea out here people will throw money at you but if he wanted a strategic partner to help like yeah. pick this thing up with him and run with it right so that's Absolutely. why i'm saying he yeah. picked you strategically to help 
like Definitely. bootstrap or should I say maybe throw gasoline onto that fire to like launch yep. this thing to the moon, right? Is that Yeah. <laughs> or to nah, Jupiter. Bro, we're going or, to right? Saturn, baby. <laughs> to Saturn. Yeah. yeah, we're going to Saturn. So I, like, I yeah, listened yeah, to Jupiter, all the AMAs, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've listened to all your AMAs on this already. Don't worry. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, so, Saturn. And, Jupiter, and this is cool. Larry Larry seems like a, a cool dude. I've listened to him talk uh, quite a few for quite a few hours now, doing all my research leading up to this. He's he's very yeah. smart and uh, very level headed. And I know yeah. me and I know I I know we're both very excitable, high energy people. Larry's yeah. very like like even and just like methodical. It seems like very uh, yeah. good for so, like a a software engineer and somebody managing software engineers and things like that. He's also from yeah. my home, uh, my home state of Ohio. So, you yeah. know, O H I O. All right, Larry, yeah. if I ever come back there, I will, I will give you a call and, and meet up with you. But yeah, he, he's Don't right worry, about where we'll I grew up. We'll get him down in Miami soon, bro. So you'll be able to see him cool. in Florida. Awesome. So that's Larry. And for anybody watching, uh, I always say, do your own research on the teams. Know yeah. who is running these projects and who's stewarding your money so check them out their linkedin profiles are public you can see like yeah. where they started in their career and how they got to where they are now these are fully doxed people uh and this is not a normal dgen project like you can find yeah. their addresses in like two seconds if you wanted to right like these people are out here this is a registered company and so for for my regular audience this is not yeah. like the typical dgen type project play um yeah speaking of that i want to show them the patent so you can actually yeah. see the patent that you guys have on the website imagine that a Look. transparent company what an anomaly <laughs> this is so new for me dude Crazy. Like, <laughs> making my job too easy out here i'm supposed to be like yeah, the man. the guy who digs into the projects but like you guys did it for yeah. me i just like here you go yeah you're supposed to have to hire the fbi but yeah, not, we just gave it to you. <laughs> so this is cool, man. Um, gave it all up. Every, everybody who's like seriously thinking about getting into pre-send, like come check this stuff out because yeah. a good patent can actually mean more than just protecting your investment oh, yeah. and your technology. That's big money. You're going to have patent That's troll companies. Licensing. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to not only have patent troll companies trying to buy this whole company just to get this, but you're probably yeah. also going to have players in this space, maybe the meta masks, the coin bases, they also might try to buy the whole company out just to get access to the patent and own it. Um, so that's yep. another cool, cool yeah. thing that you got there. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. And, and so that everybody's clear, this patent is super broad, right? But here's the thing. There's, we filed a secondary, a secondary provisional patent because we want to add the honeypot feature, the anti-spoofing feature, uh, a couple of other features like the signatory stuff where if you're sending like a $100,000 transaction and you want to make sure that the person actually gets it and you didn't fat finger the, you know, whatever. Like kind of like what I was talking about earlier, like if you just accidentally end it with a three instead of a four, but that is on the right chain it could still go through well there's a signatory feature that we could put a pin on that the the person that's sending it where they have to give the pin to the recipient before it, that it can go through see what i'm that, saying that's um, really cool and i bro, that was actually gangster, man. wasn't that so, actually like a community recommendation like i think larry yeah, said he bro. like asked the community nah, for dude. like ideas and he filtered yeah. through dozens or hundreds of ideas and like that well, one yeah, gem surfaced to the it was like yeah, he basically said, look, what happens? And because I was on a call with a YouTuber about this, um, and he was like, how can you, he was like, what if somebody sends it, but it's on the right chain, but it's the wrong address? And I was like, bro, I mean, we can't big brother you, but all right. we can do is essentially do a signatory thing. That only makes sense for like tra Here. transactions that are like five, six, seven figures, right? Nobody's going to do that for a hundred dollar transaction. I would. I, I mean, know. if Maybe it's if it's and if it's to a friend too, or like I, I pay people to help me with my YouTube business, right? Like I got expenses yeah. out here. I hire people to help me with like video editing sometimes, or graphics yeah. development, or like people who help me in other aspects of this business. And yep. I like I freak out even sending like thirty bucks, a hundred bucks, uh, four hundred bucks to them just because like if I lose that, like that's a big hit to my small business, right? And yeah, I, it is. 
it's so mad. if I can just say like, here's the pin number, I just shoot them in on Discord. And then yeah. if I could just like, boom, ensure that no matter what, that money's going to them. Because even if I read the wallet address a million times, I'm still, I got that like gut feeling that's like makes me feel uncomfortable. Like if I screw this up, like, you know what I mean? So that's a great idea. So whoever in your community came up with that and, and good for you and Larry and, and the team for like taking those really great ideas and, and saying this one's the best idea yet. Let's implement that one. Cool, man. I love it. I love, I mean, I love that. that's what we do, man. We listen to our people, dude. So like we support those who support us. So at the end of the day, I mean, you know, Wolf for Finance people were asking for like uh, like a technical, like kind of a dashboard. And I was like, look, I'm not spending 50 grand on a dashboard. I'll get you something, though. Right. And, yeah. and real talk, like the next AMA that I hosted, <clears throat> what happened? Drew had a dashboard up for you guys. Hey, guys, I listen to you. <laughs> well, we listen to you over here as well, because without you, right, we are we are not a business. Right. So we appreciate you. So that's why we listen. And we want the user experience to be as good as it possibly can for everyone in the space because, okay, maybe somebody's infallible. Maybe they're perfect and they've never done this before. Okay, great. I'm, hey, kudos. Good, good for you, bro. That's not the majority of people, but good for you, right? Now, yeah. how do we get that person to still use pre-send, right? All these other ways, honeypot, anti-spoofing, um, signatory, you know, all that type of stuff. Yeah, bro, like that still makes sense. You should still be using pre-send, stopping test transactions. Stop doing that. It's inefficient, crypto bro. I hate to break it to you. I'm sure I know everybody's like, oh, some test transaction. Okay, go be inefficient then, bro. That's fine, you know, but here's four <laughs> other things that pre-send does just so that you know, right? Now, if you have pre-send, say you are a crypto bro, right? And yeah. you think you, you're infallible. Yeah. And, but let's say one night you're a little drunk, right? Or you haven't slept in a yeah. few days, like like old Yabonks here who stays up for like three days straight working on these videos, yeah. trying to build his business. And I oftentimes like, I got to like make sure like, even if I'm really tired that I do things right because money's involved. Um, yeah. Can I have the option to turn it on or off? per transaction. Like if I don't want to use it most of the time, but I want to have it there when I do want to send uh, a contractor that I've hired $500, can I turn it on for that and then use it? I mean, in a technical sense, yeah, but we're not going to make it easy for you just in the same sense. So look at it like this. All right. Um, if you want to get out of uh, Facebook messenger, right? What do you have to do? You got to uninstall that bad boy, right? Yeah. So why would this be any different, right? This is okay. our revenue. This is our business. So no, we're not going to give it a toggleable feature because then every crypto bro that thinks he's so smart is going to do that. And then, okay, so they're going to stop and they're going to uninstall it, right? That's cool. Um, and then one time there, because that's that's fine. We, we're, we don't want to hold people hostage. At the end of the day, if you want to uninstall it, we're not going to stop you, right? But that one faithful day when you lose that hundred thousand five thousand dollar transaction you're going to come and download pre-send and i bet you never turn that bad boy back off ever again because you're going to be like dude fuck, i just lost a thousand dollars if i would have paid those transaction fees for every transaction since then i wouldn't even be close to a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars right now so i think people are going to realize like there's no point, right? There's no point in uninstalling this thing because think about it like this. Go to your insurance company, your car insurance, right? And tell them, hey, I'm going to need a refund, right? For uh, the time that my car was parked in the garage. What? They're going to laugh at you. They're going to yeah. laugh at you, man. They're going to say, that's not how it works. So it is kind of how it works with precinct. Like, you, you know, like technically, could you turn your car insurance off? Yeah, absolutely. You can turn your car insurance off, but who's going to do that every day that they park in their garage? Nobody, right? right? So I wouldn't do it here either, especially whenever you're talking pennies on the dollar. Think about a car, a uh, $25,000 car. Probably costs you about $200 a month to insure it, right? That's $2,400 a year. That's almost 10% of your car's value that you're paying to an insurance company every single year, right? We're taking one tenth of a percentage of your transaction. That means we're taking one one hundredth 
of what these insurance companies are taking to insure your cost. Right. Got it. I think it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's yeah. okay. I think we can afford this. <laughs> Well, um, I, so. I, yeah, I'm just trying to get an understanding of how, yeah. as like a end user, what my experience would be like interacting yeah. with presend. So Absolutely. I'm a MetaMask uh, user. I use MetaMask for everything. I love MetaMask. Yeah. Um, and I, if I am understanding this correctly, MetaMask is your first integration that you're rolling out, and you've used MetaMask Snaps, right? Hundred uh, percent. Yes, it's got to go into Snaps. Then we've got to put it into Flats, right? And so once that integration is done. The Chrome extension is done, and it's just a simple download. And then it's, I think, two, three clicks of a button installed, running in the background forevermore. You know what I mean? Um, and and nobody's even going to see it because it's not even, first off, it's read-only. Second off, it's working in microseconds. And third off, the only time you're actually going to see it working is when you mess up. And you're like, oh, Thank you for saving me five hundred dollars pre-send. Like it's it's pretty slick, man. So as a average end user, once yeah. I install it, I won't even realize it's working in the background. Nope, not at all. Not at all. It'll literally be like three clicks of a button when you do it, approve it, whatever. And check in fact check me, man. Go make sure that it's read only. If I'm lying, smack me in the face. I bet you nobody smacks me though. See what I'm, I'm saying? I'm only like four hours from you, so I yeah. will I will take that offer. <laughs> yeah, bring it, bro. If I'm lying, come smack me. I promise All right. you. Nobody's Deal. gonna get to smack me, dude. And I get to because record it for YouTube. Day, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean you can you can record it for whoever you want. It's not gonna happen. You see yeah. what I'm saying? I'm that confident in this. Like I'll give you a hundred dollars if it's not read only. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and one of the reasons I ask all these questions <laughs> is because, like, you are, like, one of the most confident people I know out here, yeah. right? Like, you, yeah. you're so confident, and people know that, and they know, like, that you are heavily invested in this. This thing's your baby, too. So, like, you're, yeah. you're like, your confidence plus this is your baby. Like, you're going to fight for this thing till the end. So, like, I try to bring, yeah. like, an unbiased kind of, you know, I just want to know these questions like this. It, it, it's good yeah. you're confident, though. Like, every every oh, yeah. project should have a leader that uh, and leadership that is like confident in what they're doing if they're not like you got to ask why right yeah um, man what do you guys got going <laughs> on man yeah you know so metamask snaps is actually really cool uh metamask is a fantastic technology company uh if you don't know about metamask like more so than just like downloading it and using it like they're always pushing the boundaries of technology and like they're they're really um innovative and it, they've now yeah. extended their platform with APIs and stuff that makes it easier for developers to, to integrate and create new creative technologies on top of it and with it like this. And it's awesome to see uh, a company uh, like Presend doing that and using it. Now, other wallets and things like that, are you, when you release uh, the first version of Presend, will it work for all the wallets or just MetaMask at first, followed by a rollout of the others? Yeah, just MetaMask at first because, okay. you know, it's like Rome wasn't built in a day type stuff. And I know you're asking that you already know the answer to this, right? Because you're a developer, you understand the processes. I understand yeah. you're, you're asking this because most people don't understand this. But yeah, at the end of the day, we will we'll roll it out on MetaMask via a Chrome extension because they have the largest market share that we can grab immediately, right? Then yeah. we focus on the next things, which are the other online wallets, the cold storage wallets like the ledgers and treasers, the and this is not in any particular order. Like I know what we're going after first and it's not either of those two. Um, and then okay. it's the exchange wallets and um, all the other browsers, all the other devices, all that type of stuff. But at the end of the day, it will be easily integratable on your um, MetaMask, either on your phone and uh, via Chrome extension. So. Now, will that also work on mobile devices when you launch? Yep. From day one, it will work on the mobile devices. And as long as it's Chrome enabled, it's kind of a pretty seamless integration, right? Um, so it essentially, if it works, if Chrome works on your phone, and it works inside of the app, right, then it, it'll work. Now, can I guarantee that it'll work on an iPhone from day one? No, I can't guarantee that. But 
respectively speaking, it should be able to, but with software, what you think and what actually happens usually ends up being two totally separate things, yeah. right? So what I can guarantee is that if it's a Chrome, I guess, compatible phone, yeah. Um, if it's not, we can't guarantee anything until we test that out, see, and then if it doesn't, then we integrate, right? So mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people watching this are probably more on the investor side of things, but I just yeah. want to paint a clear picture for people like how it's going to work. Cause if they say, Hey, I got this cool pre-send NFT, this, this fancy new DeFi tech startup company, uh, the people are like, Oh, well, what's that? And I want them to be able to like explain, like, it's gonna, you know, you won't even notice it's working on your Google Chrome browser. Right. So yeah. it's, it's good to have an idea. Like this is how it'll yeah, work. Yeah. So, uh, a few other things, um, you talk about this a lot and for those who haven't seen some of your other amas the market yeah. for this thing is massive right uh oh, dude, and I, and i know like from an investor perspective like yeah you hear this in every in every pitch everyone's like oh well yeah. the market's this big and if we only get this big uh of the market if we only get one percent of it then we're gonna make a, a bazillion dollars yeah. um uh, I will let you give your rundown of it because the numbers are crazy. Yeah. And for people yeah. who don't know, like we are in the beginning, like of the mm -hmm. S curve for DeFi as a whole, like we are in the baby stages. Um, yeah. So what's the market like and what's like the potential and some of your projections as a company mm -hmm. for pre-send and its revenue and profitability? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's incredibly hard to project something like pre-send because we don't know how much each transaction is going to be worth, right? We could have people that are sending $100,000 transactions. We could have people that are sending $100 transactions. Mm -hmm. So taking the average is the best way that we can really mitigate all of that fluctuation, right? Right. Um, it's yeah. kind of like the, the, the cryptocurrency market as a whole, right? You don't know if it's going to be 22000 tomorrow or 20000 Bitcoin tomorrow. It just is what it is. So you take an average of it, right? So as it sits right now, there's 300 million people, more than 300 million people in cryptocurrency right now. That means active cryptocurrency investors, it's somebody that owns a crypto asset today, right? That's only 4% of the entire global, global population. It's pretty insane, to be honest with you. Now, imagine how many people that is when we're at a 15% global adoption rate. We're insane, over a billion, dude. right? 1.2 billion, okay? Yeah. Now, if MetaMask has 30 million people, active users right now and that 4x is and metamask is the one out here building the best wallet because they're proving themselves as consistently integrating right they have 10 mm percent -hmm. of the global crypto market that owns that has a wallet right now and so at the end of the day if they grow at the same rate that the market does right and say that market's at a 15% global adoption rate, then MetaMask is going to have over 100 million users and probably exponentially more than that because if they keep separating themselves from the pack, then they'll probably have more like, instead of 120 million, they'll probably have 200 million users, right? So with that being said, crypto is like doubling year over year. But go back to the tech boom before uh, Y2K, right? 98, Not, I keep saying this is like Google in 98, right? Yeah. That tech boom, happened where like things were like in the the global adoption rate was like not doubling every year it was like tripling quadrupling quintupling every year until like now almost like 99 percent of the world has access to the internet right that's how crypto is right now because before y2k that's how google was only like four percent of the world had access to google okay and the internet so that's crypto right now so if we have a if we have a stranglehold, right? Like a stranglehold on that market, there's nobody else that can come in and take it, okay? And there's, you know, 80% of the cryptocurrency market participants are not in the market for your favorite Ponzi DeFi, right? <laughs> and my lights just keep going off. And then secondarily speaking, that's how you can tell we've been talking for a while, right? Yeah. And secondarily speaking, there's like probably at least... 30% of the entire crypto market that literally has doesn't even want to buy Bitcoin, right? But yeah. everybody in the market has to have a wallet, has to transact, okay? So our the entire 300 million people, that's our market, right? So the entire crypto market is our market. So 
that one percent if we just grab one percent of it dude that's only like <laughs> that's literally only like three million people that's only three million users that's less that's less than 10 percent of the active users on metamask right now dude like i don't see any way we don't capture that first off if we do 1 billion transactions in a year that's worth $50 per transaction of worth of crypto, it's literally brings in seven cents per transaction, right? Now that's $70 million that we just made on these dividend pools that we're giving out the retail people and the institutional investors, that's $7 million going to those dividend pools in, in one year, right? When they only raise 1.9 to 2 mil a piece respectively, right? For their race and that's in perpetuity that's for life so 1 billion transactions is literally less than seven percent of all of the transactions that happen per year right now in a bear market when it's transacting one fourth one fifth of what it normally does of just the top 24 blockchains in the top 100 like the eats the solanas the you know trons of the world right that doesn't account for all the other things, okay? And that's in a bear market. So when we hit that global adoption rate, dude, if we want to do a billion transactions in a bull market, when we've doubled the crypto market participants, bro, like a billion transactions is going to be like 1% of the transactions here soon. And we're going to be making $70 million every year. And we're going to be a nine figure company, if not 10 figures very quickly. If this thing hits global adoption, which let's be real, it will, because that's what the entire raise, all of the money that's coming in, that capital from the NFTs, that's going straight into a global marketing campaign, like similar to what crypto.com did. But here's the spoiler on that. There's no competition for us. They had to have a $500 million marketing campaign because they have to beat out every other exchange. We don't mm -hmm. have to do that. We have no competition. Right. Yeah. So it's like, man, there's a fix in the game for us. And the best way to get in is that institutional round because we're capping that at two mil. Wolf for Finance gets literally one week, September 23rd. They get one week for being absolute gangster wolf packs. Um, and and they they just for being wolf pack, they get that perk, right? Um, because I set these deals up for the people that you know are here for me. And we're here for me when I was nobody just building Wolf for Finance. And, you know, thank you guys. Wolfpack for always showing up. I appreciate you. Um, but they get a week to mint before everybody else. So is it possible that they mint out all 7,500 NFTs before whitelisters even get their chance or public sale even gets a chance? Yeah, absolutely. I've seen, I've seen stuff you like know? that happen. Yeah. Bro, it's going to get nuts. So yeah. if people want to get in, man, the best way is to go into that Discord, the Wolf of Finance Discord, hit up that institutional investor channel, pre-send institutional investor channel, and you got to come in, in at $1,000 or more and in $1,000 increments. So don't try and say, oh, I want to throw $1,100. No, 1000 2000 3000 more. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. And that's the best way that people are going to be able to get in. And spoiler alert on that, that's capped at 2 million. So if we reach 2 million before the time that you get in, and that closes the 23rd before we start minting, whitelist starts on October 1st too. But I don't even know if we get to that, to be real with you. But if we reach 2 million before September 23rd, and you haven't put your thousand or ten thousand dollars or whatever it is that you want to put in now you can't come into the institutional with less than a thousand dollars right but and the only way that you can come in institutionally so don't be emailing me because i'm not doing it i'm not going to reply to your email if you say drew i've got a thousand dollars i just told you how to do that i'm not facilitating that i only facilitate people with fifty thousand dollars or more that's an institutional investment well for finance has fifty thousand dollars that all of their investors are willing to put in right now and they're saying, yo, everybody else that has $1,000, you can come in with us and we'll just, you know, just keep piling it on, right? So even though we started out with 50000 we might end up with a million, right? Because we're lowering the barriers to entry for everybody else to get in because we know that people are freaking out. And you might not be able to get in if you wait for the retailing of teas. So, you know, be that as it is, that's how you get in. So, uh, all right. So... Let's jump right into that. Uh, so 
Yeah. We covered the market. The market's huge. We're in the baby stages of it. If you guys even get yeah. a tiny percentage of it, and you have you have no competition because you have that patent. I think patents what in the U.S. last like oh at least twenty years or something. So oh, like you guys, dude, yeah, you guys yeah. have like uh, a a long time, a very long time with no competition. <laughs> um, has yeah, it been, by, by the time, way, we'll be the Amazon. We'll be the Norton antivirus of this, and nobody will even want to touch anybody else's. You know, <laughs> we're well, gonna be standing here like this. I was gonna make an uncouth joke about becoming the the McAfee of this, and but that didn't turn out yeah, so well with him. Didn't say him. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's now, uh, with with that all being said, uh, so is the is the patent issued or has it been submitted? Uh, has yeah, it been issued to you guys? Patented. It yeah, is provisionally patented. So at the end of the day, that's signed, sealed, and delivered. We have multiple provisional patents that cover literally everything we're doing now. With okay. the way the patents work, you cannot file a full patent until you have the entire process done. So for us, that's like, you know, a couple of weeks away. Um, okay. So we can file our full patent. But at the end of the day, if you have the provisional, no one else can file a patent for what you're doing. You have up to right. a year to file a full patent. Now, if we dick around and we don't do anything, then yeah, absolutely. Somebody can come swoop in and file a patent, you know, after a year. But do you honestly think that we're going to do that, right? You know what I mean? Like, no, we're not going to just like let a billion dollar company slip through our hands. You yeah. Know? So. And I think uh, on your roadmap, I was checking yeah. it out. You guys are planning on having this actually functional yeah. uh, in September slash October. So within the next few weeks, yeah. are you guys planning Dude, on launching We're shooting this for October 1, bro. We're shooting for October 1. So... Take that October with a grain of salt. I want it to be like October 1, you know okay. what I mean? Um, and we're on schedule for that, to be honest. Now, you know better than anybody that, you know, what what you think is going to happen and what actually happens when you're developing software is sometimes two totally separate things. But yeah. with that being said, we're keeping people on task. We have the dude that he literally is a senior developer for Amazon, right? He is the guy that invented the LMS for Horde, right? He wrote that up. Okay. That's that's one of our devs, right? We just okay. brought him on. So he's streamlining this. Let's get it done, right? Cool. So, yeah. Well, that, that's awesome. And yeah, like you said, when you're developing software, there are always unforeseen it's roadblocks nuts, and, and you never know what's going to happen until you're like, you're you're debugging it and you're like, oh, I didn't see this Flash. coming. But uh, that Big that's fast. cool. You guys are looking to launch fully functional uh October 1st, ideally, and once that once that happens, then that provisional patent can be uh, resubmitted a full to a yeah. full patent. Okay. So, yeah, full excellent. patent and then worldwide patent, too, because you can't get a worldwide provisional patent and you just have to file the full patent. Um, so, But if you know much about patent law, if you have a patent in the United States, it's pretty enforceable pretty much everywhere that's civil. Now it's Korea, North Korea. They're gonna say no, nah. <laughs> you know. But uh, we'll get a worldwide, so nothing even worry about there. Cool, awesome. So that's good to know. And you guys, um, have you already partnered with Flux? I, I noticed this on here, or is that in the process? No, that's, also... in, that's in process. That's who okay. we want to partner with in the future. Now, at the end of the day, um, our website, our app, all that stuff, it's gonna run on Flux. Like we have Flux stones. Like it's awesome. um, we have like. All that is going to be running on Flux. Um, oh, I think it already is. Actually, I think the Amazon guy is literally doing that right now. I don't know if it's done, so don't quote me on it. Okay. Um, there's always, like, so much stuff happening with development. You know, it's like from minute to minute, it could change. Um, it, it, yeah, Flux but, is amazing. And yeah, I'm no, just like... we are not partnered with Flux. I don't want even anybody to get that twisted. This is roadmap stuff. This is yeah, not yeah, yeah. signed, sealed, and delivered. Now, well, the interesting thing, though, if you are hosting the presend software on Flux servers like yeah. i think that that's a great idea for DeFi and in terms of like it decentralization exactly redundancy an and, segue into them you know yeah. and then hey yo flux why don't you put this in Zellcore, right <laughs> you know like yeah and and then you're also i saw this you're looking 
uh, at partnerships potentially with Gnosis, and yeah. they're the ones who do like the the multi sig vaults, multi -sigs, everything, everything, mm -hmm. and they're like the gold standard yeah. for multi sigs right now. At, at, for my understanding and all like my investigations, Bro, we're, we're partnering with the best, dude. Yeah. We're only we're not. I'm not saying that we're partnered with any of those, right? We've got two partnerships. We talked about them earlier. But we're only targeting the best, right? We're not going to partner with, you know, PooCoin, DeFi, whatever over here. Like, we're going with brand and name recognition. We're, we're in a class of our own up here. So if people want to stay down here and get partnerships down there, y'all can have them. We won't fight you for them, I promise. Yeah, and so you're, the roadmap's great. I, 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 yeah. Uh... I, I want to tell everybody. Check and it's out. not too complicated either, bro. It's not like yeah. we're like, oh, we're building a an international space station on Venus, and for our whole hodlers to come to, and we're gonna integrate uh grass on the interior of the Earth's core. That's what we're doing. We're not doing any of that dumb stuff. Like we're just saying, look, we're developing the software. We're gonna put it and integrate it into every single way that we can possibly do it so that it works for everybody in every medium, right? But we're doing one thing and we're doing one thing well. There's no of this frill and shill, like we're coming up with merch and we're gonna do it in a tea marketplace. Like none of that. So <laughs> we're focused, bro. Laser Are you building focus. your own decks? Everybody's building their bro, own decks but these I'm days. Them decks. Yeah, bro. Like we're gonna do it in a tea marketplace. <laughs> hey, uh I I, I like this so I think this is a super cool yeah. idea um and, and we can go into this I know you've got another AMA yeah. uh, with another uh, a team that I really like you I think you're doing a hydro whales AMA tonight yeah. um yeah. I really like those guys are the project 79 guys too they're smart dudes um so yeah. I don't I don't want to hold you up for them but I do want to jump mm -hmm. into just a few last pieces for people who want to learn some more about this and also how to get into this. So mm -hmm. as a user, when this launches, we can all just go yeah. download the extension and start using it. Fantastic. I'll probably yeah. end up doing it myself because yeah. I send out payments to people that I hire as I'm building my YouTube DeFi influencer business, right? Yeah. I have to pay people all the time. Yeah. But and I make sure you download it just like with MetaMask. Go to our website and use our links. Don't go out and right. like if you get scammed, that's on you, man. I'm telling you, do it from the website because when this thing becomes what it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of fakes. There's going to be a lot of sponsored Google search BS right. that, you know, just make sure be be cool. Be careful. Yeah, be careful. Only go to the official. Uh, yeah. Uh, from the extension uh, page, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. for people who want to invest in this, uh, yeah. as, as a, say I snag one of these pre-send NFTs, not, uh, and there are two kinds, right? There's like an institutional yeah. one and a retail yeah. one. Well, first yeah. off, what's the difference between those? Yeah, so retail is only $250. Right. Institutional, we have now opened up, but institutional is a thousand dollars. There's I can't tell you what the difference is because it'll take me like I explained all of it in 30 minutes over an AMA. If people are interested in that, that's fine. Get into the Wolfer Discord, ask for the link to the AMA, or just go to my YouTube channel, check out my lives. It's my last live. It says like Wolfer Finance X Precent or whatever, what you need to know, something like that. And so there's mad benefits to being institutional over being um, retail, but here's the main difference is you have access for free just by only said NFT to a dividend pool that's 10% of the net income of every future software that we develop. Because again, remember, this is a software company. We're not one trick pony. If we develop pre-send and then our team starts growing and this becomes some big, massive business that it's supposed to be, dude, we're going to invent so many other softwares. The, this thing's going to make people ridiculous amounts of money. But if you can't afford a $1,000 NFT, then sign up for the whitelist because they're $250 that starts on October 1st. If you want to be an institutional investor, you have to have at least $1,000. Again, do not email me. Do not hit me up with a thousand dollars. I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm about to say. Go to the Discord because Wolfer Finance has over fifty thousand dollars pooled right now, a lot more than that, and they're letting everybody else in in thousand dollar increments. Okay, so you're adding on to their investment. 
institutional investment is $50,000 minimum. Wolfer Finance is being really cool and all of their people raised $50,000 and then said, okay, we'll let everybody else that's freaking out that they're not going to be able to get into this add on in thousand dollar increments. So if you got 10 grand and you can't get in on the institutional by yourself with the 50 K and hit me up, then go into Wolfer Finance and give them the 10 grand. Right. And again, you're not giving them 10 grand. You're going to transfer it yourself to the institutional investor wallet. There is no like escrow, somebody random taking your money. So don't send your money to anybody. There's a wallet in, in the discord channel that is a pinned comment from me. Do not send it anywhere but there, right? And do not send it with anything but BUSD on Binance Smart Chain. That's it. <laughs> like, just be cool, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> But they, they probably uh, would wish they had pre-send already. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling people, they're like, dude, you're going to stop sending test transactions and you're going to be very happy. Dude, I've had... Uh... You know, you you know this as a YouTuber. If you cover a project and uh, you'll you get people with a lot of money that reach out to you and say, "Hey, I want to put fifty thousand dollars into this," or "I want to put a hundred thousand. I've had somebody say, "I want to put one point six million dollars into with a project," right? And I'm just sitting there right. like, uh, uh, like, I, here you go, and I send them to the team. You know, work it out with them. I don't know. Um, but like, I I imagine if you're tr sending a transaction of like a million dollars or like fifty thousand dollars to me, that's just like crazy, right? I would be looking yeah, for protected. every pr every insurance I could on that transaction. Uh, so that's funny that we're talking about institutional investment and like I I often have like pondered what like the whales out here that I I talk to what they're thinking when they're sending that much money at one time. If yeah. I'm freaking out over five hundred dollars. I can't even imagine fifty thousand dollars, dude. I have no, no words, bro. So for pre-send, that's a no-brainer right there. Use case, boom, like that is a couple pennies, a couple bucks, no-brainer for a transaction that big. But yeah, institutional, if they want to get in, they go to uh, Wolf if, Finance. Discord. Go to Wolf I'll Finance. Give you the link. Anybody can come in now. You only get access to that channel. So don't be trying to message people in Wolf <laughs> Finance. It's not gonna work. We, sh okay. we shut it down because too many scammers like to come into places and tell them that they're Drew Wolfer and that they're giving away fifty thousand dollars and all this dumb stuff. And I'm tired of it. So <laughs> that chant, that whole Discord is paid now. Not because I care. Not because I want your money. Don't even subscribe. I don't care. I don't need the ten dollars. Yeah. I just need dumb people to not be in my Discord trying to scam all the people in my discord essentially. So we opened up that one channel so that anybody and everybody can come in. So again, be vigilant. You already know, like I pinned the comments. If it's not coming from me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really be, you know, you know too much of it. You know, you're doing it big when you've got people pretending to be you. <laughs> Yeah. I've had I've had fake Drew Wolfers message me and they're like, hey, and I'm just like, dude, I'm friends with Drew. Get out of here. And like, they're like, wait, what? And then like block. Um, and I finally got uh, my first impersonators too now. So if you're on YouTube or on, on my watching this video and a you bonks WhatsApp person responds to your comment, that is not me. Look for like the yeah. verified. It never check mark. is. It never is. Y'all should know that. It never <laughs> is the person. Why would we give you our phone number? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I yeah. would never get to do anything if I just gave my phone number out. Like, if I gave my call link out, dude, I would never get to do anything. Yeah. I would never get to build businesses. Um, so, so, so yeah, only go to uh, the Wolfer Finance Discord and create a yeah. ticket there in the Institutional Investor channel yeah. uh, to get yeah, in. Yeah, you don't even have to create a ticket. Uh, you'll see, it's going ham in there right now, man. It's going okay. ham. And SQ Blackbird, she's my mod. She's spearheading the whole thing. Um, so at the end of the day, she's the one that's going to get you sorted. She's a pineapple. Uh, she's funny. She's awesome. And uh, she's the one getting it done. So yeah, appreciate so, it, man. So that's where the institutional people that want to uh, piggyback onto the Wolfer Finance institutional yeah. position because they've already hit the yeah. 50000 minimum and you'll take mm -hmm. on additional institutional investors that don't have the 50000 or more to tack yeah. them on in $1,000 increments on top of that 50000 with Wolfer. Now, yeah. for yeah. the retailers, assuming that there are any left to grab after the Wolfer Finance uh, 
pre-sale for this goes and the Wolfer people are probably going to try to buy up a bunch of them if they don't sell out completely between that and the institutional round um, and there are some October left for the retail. Uh, yeah, October 1, noon, o- October BUSD. Okay, October 1st, noon yep. Eastern time. Central, Chicago, Central. like in the logo. So think Chicago you're time. Florida, you're Biden Florida now, bro. You're Florida now. Uh, you're Florida people uh, now, yeah, man. Dude, but at the end of the day, bro, <laughs> Florida people don't act like me, man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, BUSD, Binance Smart Chain, um, October 1st is when the whitelist. If you're not on the whitelist, you can't mint. So make sure you go to pre-send and sign up for the whitelist. I'm going to be okay. honest with you. I'm not even going to tell you about public sale. It ain't going to it. I, I'm so confident in that that I'm not even going to air out when public sale is. It is what it is. There is no public sale. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Like, seriously. And if you know anything about me, you know I'm not lying. Like, go back and watch my predictions and what I was talking about on Wolf of Finance and, and tell me I lied about anything. Um, and and then make your own inferences on it. I'm telling the truth on this one because I bet you it's not going to public sale, man. It ain't going to survive. Um, it's, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, I believe you. Uh, and yeah, this is this is exciting. And for people retail wise, because, you know, the majority mm-hmm. of the people out here are like me, like we don't have a ton of money, but like we want to have yeah. exposure to this stuff. So yeah. will these will there be like a secondary market if people? Yeah, absolutely. So if like one of these Wolfer folks is just trying to flip some of their NFTs at like, mm-hmm. you know, a 10 percent or like 20 percent, try to get a quick little flip on it. There yeah. will probably be a secondary market where, like, yeah, yeah it'll totally launch at two fifty. But if it's like yeah. three hundred dollars a few weeks later, I might be able to grab one, and that's not too crazy yeah. of a price difference. So, Tofu yeah, no, NFT. No, no, no. Okay, yep, cool. Tofu NFT is where it'll be. It'll be on Binance Smart Chain. You'll probably have to pay BUSD for it. I would not count on it being ten or twenty percent. These guys are not going to let you get away with that. They're going to hit you for two x. Um, just watch, or yeah. they're going to hit you for at least fifty percent. My guess. I don't know. I can't predict the future on stuff like that. But what I can tell you is what I see in terms of people saying what they're going to mint and how many white listers we already have and all that stuff from behind the scenes. Yeah, man, it's going to be it's going to be wild, man. I'll be live streaming it first day, um, September 23rd. So, okay, I did it for Wolfer Finance and we minted a thousand NFTs out of five thousand at five hundred dollars a piece. In less than thirty minutes, we were at like eleven hundred. It was nuts. I so missed it. I'll be doing I, it on I, this one too. I I did a uh, a video for like Hydra Whales as they were like launching it, and dude, I missed my window because I didn't have enough gas on Ethereum network. And the time it took me to like transfer everything, it minted out, and I was like, Ugh. and then I was like, yeah. all right, I'm just gonna buy it on the secondary market, and they were like twice as much immediately, and I was like, dang it. <laughs> so yeah. gotta be there. All right, so just uh, if is there um, a revenue stream for the business if on like the secondary market transactions, if somebody sells their NFT, do you guys get like a a, a percent kickback for secondary transactions or anything like that to continue funding uh, pre-send on top of the other revenue model? Yeah, I mean, you know, pre-send makes all of its money from actual transactions from real people on real blockchains with real wallets doing real stuff. Right. Um, so is there going to be a um a royalty? I think so, but I don't know, man, because honestly, we were saying 10% royalty, but Tofu NFT doesn't have a 10% royalty thing. So I think maybe it'll be three percent. I don't know. At the most, it'll be a 10% royalty if they'll allow it. If they yeah. won't, then we'll do whatever the max is. Um, because these things are going to trade, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't put a royalty on Wolf of Finance. I'm kind of regretting that now, especially for the simple fact that, like, we got, like, 150 ETH that have traded on Wolf of Finance NFTs. Bro, if I would have put 10% on that, that would have been 15 ETH. That's yeah. a half of a validator that would have been brought in for my community. Yep. Dude, I should have done it. But, I mean, I wanted people to know that it wasn't about the money, right? So, yeah, but... Yeah, man. Yeah. All good. I think I think it's good you're considering it though, because I mean I'm not trying to like 
say, oh, charge, you know, nickel and dime or anything. But no, at the end of the day, this is a business. And like, we're yeah. as uh, investors, if we're getting these NFTs, like we want to make sure the business is healthy and that it's going to yeah, have multiple revenue streams just to keep it growing and developing and everything. So it's good to know these things and how the business yeah. is going to succeed and, and healthy revenue streams are is good for that. Um, that now, if people can't get one of these NFTs because it for whatever... Uh, you know, if it sells out before it even gets to the public sale, I am going, Drew was kind enough to hook me up, hook my audience up with an NFT to do a giveaway contest with. So I've got one of these things. I am, uh, I, I am, ho I'm hoarding it, uh, right now, but I, uh, I'm going to take the time to set up a giveaway contest. I'm going to do a whole thing. I'm going to do a video series on it. And I'm going to cool. give away one of these pre-send NFTs. It's going to be super exciting. My last NFT giveaway I did for uh, another very popular project was just amazing. Everybody was so excited. It was like a $1,500 value at that point in time. And like people were freaking out. It was a really fun thing to do for my community. So I'm going to do it again. Uh, Drew agreed to hook me up with one of them, set it aside basically for my audience. So, uh, Absolutely. thanks. Thank you, Drew. And, uh, the rest of the team for, uh, agreeing to, to do that for my people. It's going to be really fun for everybody. And I hope whoever gets it, gets something that pres gives them like passive income for yeah. years to come. Right. Uh, dude, pass it down to your kids, man. Let them inherit it, you know? So, so before we wrap this up, I, I, there's one other question. If, if somebody gets one of these NFTs, what kind of like passive income are you foreseeing? I know you did a video on this on your channel that was like really exciting. Uh, can you kind of like, what do you think in like the first one to three years, one of these NFTs could yield somebody? Bro, I mean, dude, to be honest with you, kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier, where we don't know what the transactions are going to be worth, but I always err on the side of caution. So like whenever I was doing that, like 1 billion transactions that would bring in $70 million. I mean, that's very plausible within that first three years, right? Which if you think about it, that would be like four or five X for the retail investors. And it would be like five, six X for the institutional investors. So it could be something like that. You know, I can't put a, I can't put a number on it. I can't put, you know, it's illegal. Right. I can't yeah. do that in the United <laughs> States as a United States based company. I can't say like, oh, you're guaranteed three percent every day. It's not like that. Plus, we're not a fake apps DeFi. Right. Like we're not we have an inability to lie to you because we're bringing in real money from real transactions. So with that being said, man, this thing is going to bring in hundreds of millions of dollars over the lifetime of it, dude, um, this institution. So if you have 10 percent of that, <laughs> that's a big deal. If you got 12 and a half percent of that in that institutional pool, that's a big deal. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, that's about as good as I can get for you other than the, <laughs> so the, um, you can't, uh, calculations I did earlier. You can't make any guarantees. Check out, uh, his video where he breaks down some, some projections like conservative mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and, and very, uh, you know, there's conservative medium and then like really bullish projections yeah. um but 10 percent of all the income is going to go back to the retail nft holders and yep. so if you guys do like seven million dollars i'm just these are projections i'm giving examples what ifs if you did seven yeah. million dollars what's 10 percent of that like 700, 700k 700k yeah. and there and if are you guys only raised you know 1.9 million that's already over 33 percent roi right there Right. If we make seven million dollars in a few months or if we make seven million dollars in a year, you know, essentially what 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 it really comes down to is if you guys raise one point nine million. Right. Then we need to make 20 million dollars for you to ROI. Right. And if we need to make 20 million dollars for you to ROI, we're bringing in seven cents per transaction. Right. And that's on fifty dollar transactions because we're being very conservative with what we do. That's 300 million transactions. That's one transaction per cryptocurrency market participant. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody does one transaction this year. We just, you are um, awesome. So there's that. Yeah. So. Very cool. So uh, yeah. 
that's kind of what we're looking at. 7,500 of these NFTs to give you uh, exposure yeah. to their uh, dividend pool. And you can check out like the little uh, demo they've got here. You can test yeah. it out. It, yeah. You can, you could, as a test working it demo. Test it on test. Test it on yeah. test net. And yeah. a cool little feature that I found from watching some of your demo videos is if you want to find what the minimum amount that you can send to do this test is click the little up arrow here and whatever like network yeah. you're on, it'll like pre-populate with the it'll minimum. I'll tell you, pre-populate yeah. it, dude. It's I slick, like that. man. It's yeah. slick. Yeah. So, so. so very cool, well, man. Hey, man. Thank you so much for bringing me on the channel, dude. I truly appreciate it. And thanks you to everybody that's, you know, been on the channel watching, you know, all the support, all the love. Even if you hate me, even if you hate my braids, man, I appreciate <laughs> it. Make sure that you comment that you hate me and that you hate my braids in the comments section. Hit the dislike button if you don't like me. Hit the like button if you do like me. I appreciate it. We don't discriminate. Um, but at the end of the day, time is precious. And I just appreciate, for good or bad, if you showed up and spent your time with us, you know, chatting about pre -send. And I, I appreciate you, Alex, also um, for bringing me on the channel and, and doing this, dude. Yeah, of course. Uh, and I... I know you say, you know, if you hate me, say something in the comments. Most of my community that I've talked with, and I talk with a lot of them, they all love you, man. They, they're they like, hey, yeah. are you, when are you going to do a Drew Wolfer video or a pre-send video? And I'm like, just give me time man, to I catch it up. It. Yeah, so my, my community uh, really likes what you're doing out here. Uh, and so yeah. do I. I appreciate you coming on my show today, answering all these questions, and especially for uh, hooking me up with one of these pre-send NFTs yeah. to do a giveaway with for my, for my community. Uh, I, I love yeah. giving back to them. So uh, thanks for all your time, uh, Drew. And Absolutely. thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, what, a, what a fun interview. We'll do some more uh, in the future. So, Drew, thanks for your time. I know you got to get going to your next AMA. Yeah, uh, everybody, yeah. thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye. Yeah, have a good day.